Hello and welcome to the Meet the Parents podcast. Hello and welcome to part two of our Bumper Christmas edition. If you've listened to part one, you'll already know that this is also our last ever episode after nearly two years of parenting chat. If you haven't listened to it yet, well, now you know. In the first part, I chatted with Amy, Dave, Simon, Haley, and Mark about our respective plans for Christmas. We also took a look back at how our lives have changed since the podcast started and shared some of our plans for 2018. In this second half, I'll be having the same discussion with Hannah and the two Johns. But first I'm going to catch up with Vicky, who has been, well, otherwise occupied for the past few months. So it's been a while since you were last on the podcast, during which time your your much chronicled conception journey came to an end and you gave birth to Rex. Now, I know it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride, both before and since the birth, so... Just bring us quickly up to speed with how things are progressing. Yes, hello everybody. It's going okay. He's nearly six months old. He'll be six months old on Boxing Day. And uh, he's starting to sit up unaided. I don't have to hold him so much. He giggles. He he smiles at everyone. He's such a flirt. (laughs) And he thinks everything's funny. Yeah, he's, he's rolling over all the time. We've been gradually weaning him. It's been a slow process. He's not... It's more of more of a taster than a nourishment um, perspective, and it's, that's gradually increasing. He's almost outgrown his crib next to the bed, next to the bed, the Chico crib that we've got, and uh, he's too big for it now. You can tell he's not as comfortable as he was. We're looking at around Christmas time. He's going into his own room, into his in new cot, and. Uh, that's where he'll be but whether or not he carries on letting me only sleep two hours at a time at the very most we'll see but I have to say I've found it really hard (laughs) no I'm not I'm not surprised I I think all those memories of of sleepless nights we had when our kids were were that kind of age have have now been blotted from the memory (laughs) I'd forgotten and of course the grace is nearly 11 so and I think what I found hardest in the whole having a baby process afterwards is the fact that I have pressed reset and I hadn't really allowed for that. And I ha- I have had some really, really low moments over the last month or so. And I think I felt guilty for feeling low because I've tried for so long to have him. Um, and I've been through all the infertility process and seen people who can't have babies. And I'm still friends with a lot of people who can't have babies. And then you have this element of guilt because you've had the baby and then you're feeling low because you've had the baby. And you just think, I shouldn't be feeling like this. But actually, there's no rhyme nor reason to it. And a lot of people have said you've had so many different hormones. You know, you've had two rounds of IVF. You have then had preeclampsia. Then you had a baby. Now you're breastfeeding. And all those things involve home hormones as well. So, you know. I've tried to be kind to myself and allow myself these feelings. Yeah, no, that's right. I think it's uh, it's so easy to to hope for and expect perfection, and reality is is very rarely anything like that, is it? Absolutely, yeah. And and you know, he's getting easier as each day goes by. And whilst I don't want to wish away the new baby days, at the same time, I'm looking forward to him growing. So you know. Now, Christmas is still more than a week and a half away as we record this segment. So. How are your preparations for Christmas coming along? Are you, are you all set for your first Christmas as a family of four? Yeah, we're doing pretty well, thanks. I've pretty much done presents. We haven't put our tree up. We usually do that sort of... It's funny because Christmas falls on a funny time this year because it's it's on a Monday. Um, so normally we do it two weeks before, but we're actually doing it this weekend because I just don't know where the time's gone. gone. And it, because it's on a Monday, you suddenly think, oh, crikey, no, there's only actually one weekend properly left, really. And um, what are you doing for Christmas this year? Are you are you and Ross taking an extended break? And you know, do, do you have any particular plans for the holiday period? I have slowed right down, and then Ross is slowing down. He's still working, and then we are off to Ross's parents' house for Christmas, and we do that every year. But I think it's going to be a bit more difficult over the years to come because Ross's sister is also expecting a baby as well next year. 
so it's going to get a bit more crowded but so yes so we're we're staying at ross's parents for two nights and then ross uh, grace is off to her father's and then we'll be seeing my mum between christmas and new year and then of course it's grace's birthday the day after new year's day <laughs> of course yes so so what's uh, what's christmas day going to be to be like for you and yeah you know, who who ends up doing the cooking of christmas dinner yeah, well, I'm really, I'm really lucky because Ross's mum's doing that this year. Um, I don't think I could have coped doing a whole Christmas dinner on lack of sleep. I probably would have forgotten most things and burnt things or undercooked them. <laughs> There'll be us four: Ross's mum and dad, Ross's aunt, Ross's sister, and her hus- her husband to be, and their two dogs. <laughs> so it's be, be a house full of people and dogs. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a proper family gathering. So once the tree is up. Um, how many presents will there be underneath it? Um, is, is it going to be relatively restrained or is it going to look more like, um, I don't know, Donald Trump's desired wall between the US and Mexico? <laughs> It'll be somewhere in between. We've tried to just rein it back in a little bit. We do tend to go a little bit mad on Grace, but we've reined it back in a bit. But of course, now we've got Rex's pre- pre- presence in, her, in that place. So, uh, yeah, and of course... I'm one of seven, so she gets presents from her brothers and sisters. So does Rex now. So you can probably imagine the kids' piles are, are pretty huge. <laughs> yeah, we, we say the same every year. Oh, we're going to rein it in. We're going to be restrained. We're not going to buy so many presents. And then Christmas Eve rolls around and my family turn up. And, you know, you've got then all those additional presents that have come from their grandparents and their uncle. And, and we'll look at the living room and go, yeah, we failed again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, so let's let just do a few uh, a few quick fire questions. So, um, Russell Sprouts, yes or no? Do you know what? If you'd asked me that question three years ago, I would have said no. But after the last three years, I have one or two on the plate just because. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I must be in the minority. I love Russell Sprouts. If you had to listen to one and only one Christmas song for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, I think I'd have to say Greg Lake. And I believe in Father Christmas. Uh, ah, that's an interesting selection. Any particular reason why? Because when I was a kid, it was, uh, I can remember sitting in the car waiting for my sister to finish her riding lesson. I'd done mine and I came on the radio and I just couldn't believe, I just thought it was magical. And um, other than a good night's sleep, what are you really hoping Santa will bring you this Christmas? Or do you already know what you're getting? I have no clue. And I'm just, I'm just, you know what, I've, I've got what I want. My present arrived early in June. So I'm happy to see my two children now unwrap their presents, even though Rex won't really get it. Not yet. But I'm, I'm, my present is the Christmases of years to come now. Yeah, that's a love, and that's a lovely way to look at it. So let's finish by looking both backwards and forwards in time. So... To start with, um, other than the obvious, <laughs> what other significant things have happened in your life since we started the podcast back in February last year? Oh, crikey. Um, I think I've taken on new clients from a social media perspective. I work for one of the Dragon's Den former dragons. And I have, obviously I'm on return to leave right now, but I, I've got that job to go back to and I just feel much cal- in a much calmer place everything um even though I'm sort of hectic with no sleep and having looking after a baby I feel now I'm much more aware of what's important to me up until sort of early last year I think I prioritized not very well um but now I feel like I'm happier with where my priorities lie that, that that's a great place to be you, you've been on such a long and arduous journey over the last couple of years in particular that as you say it does help you put things into perspective and it's it's a great position to be in when you've had that opportunity to take that step back and and reevaluate what really is important in your life and what is yeah stuff that's nice to do but isn't necessarily need to do so yeah and, and finally any big plans for 2018 I think it's just to um, step up my earning ability and um, come back to work with a bang <laughs> at some point. 
you know, I also want to juggle the fact that I want to see Rex grow up. I don't want to just put him in a nursery. We didn't have him for that reason. So I want to make sure that I'm around for him. But at the same time, I also want to make sure, and there he is on cue upstairs, I can hear him. Um, I want to make sure that with my career, I include my photography. I want to start building on that. That's the thing that's most important to me. And I guess that's it. So, I mean, it's been lovely to have you back on the podcast one last time before we finish. And uh, it's been fantastic catching up with you on a regular basis through what has been such a um, an exciting, scary and nerve-wracking period of your life. And and I, I, I know we'll stay in touch. So be- before you go, just remind us where we can find you online. OK, so my blog is Verily Victoria Vocalises. That's V-E-V-I-V-O-S dot com. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Vic Welton. We're on to our final lap now with the chequered flag in sight. We're finishing off with the last three members of the podcast team. Hannah from Budding Smiles, John Adams, a.k.a. Dad Blog UK, and John Roberts, Dad You Geek. Good evening, all of you. Good evening. Hello. Now it's December the 12th as we're recording this, so Christmas is looming fast on the horizon. So how are your preparations for Christmas coming along? Are you all set or are you more last minute merchants? Hannah? I'm I'm not all set, but I don't feel too panicky about it. So maybe in another week from now I'll be slightly more <laughs> frantic about it. Um, My biggest thing is I haven't actually decided what I'm eating on Christmas Day because I'm the only vegetarian, um, so uh, I I ought to actually do something about that before I end up just having a plate of potatoes and vegetables. But other than that, I feel feel like I'll be okay. (laughs) Excellent. And uh, how are things coming along in the Adams household, John? About 80% there. Um, but there are a few more Christmas cards to write. I've got a couple more presents to buy for my wife and a nephew. I'm I, I'm not panicking, but the two the two unexpected and unplanned snow days I've just had uh, with, with the kids haven't haven't helped. Yeah, I'm sure they've played havoc with many people's plans this week. And finally, John, how about you? Now I know the weather has affected your travel plans today, but how are your Christmas preparations coming along? Yeah, but I, I'm actually more organised this year than I've ever been, ever in the history of my Christmases. So I'm feeling quite relaxed, but I don't want to let that slip and just completely forget about the few presents I still need to buy. Yeah, and thankfully we're pretty well sorted too, although I can take absolutely none of the credit for it. Uh, thankfully Heather's the organised one in our house, and I'm just obediently doing whatever I'm told to do. So what are you guys doing for Christmas this year? Are you taking an extended break, and do you have any particular plans for the holiday period? John, when do you finish up for the holidays, and what are your plans? Uh, no, I, I, I'm actually looking forward to it. This year is the first year I've worked at a company um, in financial services that actually closes over the Christmas period. So um, I finish a few Fridays, is it? A couple of Fridays, a week Friday. Yeah, 22nd I finish, So and then I'm not back to the new year. So I'm very much looking forward to it. We're not at home at all over Christmas. So there's no, we've not had to prepare any cooking or any anything sorting out what we're eating. So I'm really looking forward to it and hopefully have a chance to relax and not get ill, which is what usually happens at Christmas. And you've got a football trip planned for the weekend before Christmas, haven't you? <laughs> I have, yeah. I don't know how I got away with this one, to be honest. As some of you may know, I'm an avid Spurs fan for my sins. I, I, I've been trying to get an away game in this season and not to that much success, really. But I'm going to Burnley on the 23rd, so just a short trip up the road. <laughs> it's practically around the corner, isn't it, Burnley? Yeah, the, the wife did actually... I'm going with a friend of mine, Helen, and, and she, she, it's only now the wife's realised that we're both mental. That, <laughs> that an, an eight-hour round trip on uh, the same day to go and watch some football, she just doesn't understand it. This seems perfectly reasonable to me. Says the fellow Spurs fan. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know why it's so much of a shock for her. I disgracefully went to Madrid on one of my daughter's birthdays to watch Tottenham, and Ooh. I went to Southampton on another one where the wife actually bought the ticket. So um, <laughs> I've missed both my daughter's birthdays for football, so this really shouldn't come as a surprise. I just hope we don't get any snow, otherwise I'll be spending Christmas up there. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, that could be interesting. Uh, Hannah, how about you? Any plans for Christmas? 
I'm not going to see Spurs because I am not a season ticket holder, unfortunately. Um, no, I'm also finishing work on the 22nd, so the countdown's on for that. And we're both off, Phil and I both off in that week between Christmas and New Year. So we're just going to catch up with friends and obviously see all the family, as, as many people as we can. We our, our kids, I think, with them still being so little, they don't really grasp the concept of relaxing on weekends and holidays. So as far as the weather will allow, we'll still be up at the Cracker Sparrows and getting out the house as early as we possibly can. So I'm sure our friends will really appreciate us descending <laughs> upon them at about nine o'clock on <laughs> various mornings of the holidays. <laughs> Yeah, and Martha obviously is still a bit young, but what about Toby? Is he excited about Christmas? So excited, yeah. It's the first year where it really feels like he's totally grasped it. Um, Martha just demands more, more, more when she sees chocolate. Um, she does. She's loving Father Christmas. Her her new newest words are Mistmas reindeer, Mistmas tree, and chocolate. But Toby is so excited bless him he had his first nativity this morning at nursery and I managed to only cry once uh, but yeah it's it's going to be a really exciting one I think I'm looking forward to it and John uh, what are you going to be up to over the holidays and will you be taking time off from the blog don't be foolish Tim I don't do relaxation <laughs> um, that, w- that there will be a fleeting visit to see my uh, my family in the Cotswolds, and there'll be a fleeting visit to um, to the, to the in-laws, uh, Jill's family, um, just outside of Glasgow. But I'm hoping to get in a couple of cheeky drone flights. Um, and I, I can't here in the, here in the Spurs fans here. I've got to be. Honest, I'm, I'm not really that big on football, but my my, my football moment will come in the new year when uh, I will be going to watch Oldham Athletic. Uh, oh, proper football. Wow. Uh, yes. So what's Christmas Day like for each of you? John, you said you're not going to be at home, so uh, what's your Christmas Day going to consist of? Uh, so Christmas for me is um, over at my uncle's. I'm from a relatively large family, so very rarely do we all get together. But um, there's just um, at my uncle's with his children and my parents and and my family obviously so it's gonna be about i don't know t- uh, about 10 12 of us something like that together at christmas day so that'd be very nice and then and then over my sisters on boxing day so i'm looking forward to that um what about you hannah where's christmas day going to take place for you and who's going to be doing the cooking uh, well, we'll be starting at home. So I think Christmas Eve, we're going to see Phil's parents. And then we'll be at home that night. And Christmas morning, will just be the four of us. But then we'll be heading down to my parents. They're only about half an hour or so away. Um, my brother's going to be over from Germany. So it'll be uh, the four of us, my parents and my brother. His girlfriend's joining us, I think, on the 26th. Seventh, I think she flies over. Um, so, yeah, it'll be nice. There's seven of us at my mum and dad's. Um, mum will do the cooking, bless her. Um, I'll probably be in charge of cooking mine because I think she panics a little bit about vegetarian food. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it'll just be a nice, relaxed one, really. We don't do too much fanfare when it comes to Christmas Day. And, uh, as I say, the kids will make sure that everyone's uh, up and about and, Phil has insisted that we don't play Trivial Pursuit this year because mm. he's been, uh, yeah, he's been forced to play it by my dad and brother and I every year that we've been together. So he's insisted <laughs> that we're not playing that. He's bought a game, I can't think what it's called, Speak Out or something, where you have to wear this awful retainer plastic oh, yeah. thing. It looks absolutely god awful. So apparently we're playing that. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Uh, and how about you, John? Uh, yeah, well, the, the, the children will will probably largely, you know, uh, r- run the show. And I'm rather shocked, guys. I'm rather no one's mentioned the Queen's speech. <laughs> Come on! Yeah. I'm expecting a tweet from from Her Majesty. I, I don't know. Live. Uh, honestly, get a bunch of bloggers in talking about the Queen's speech, and it quickly breaks down to Facebook Live. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to ask you to do next. But Google Hangout. Um, I don't know if any of you have been watching The Crown. They 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 they, they highlighted the Queen's speech being the first televised one on The Crown in season two. So perhaps oh, really? um, we need to jump forward and do a Facebook Live. I'm sure <laughs> Harry could help her out. 
I feel we're digressing somewhat. Yeah, so John, Christmas Day. Christmas Day. Well, Jill and I will will cook the the food wherever we are um, because we just just like to do that. Kids will generally go crazy. Um, They will be Queen's Speech. I will undoubtedly drink whiskey because I'll be surrounded by Scots, no doubt. I think the other guys have already said it for me, really. You know, it's, it's, it's the extended family will, will, will be there and just be, you know, one of those sort of family occasions. As for us, we'll be having my family over. I'll be doing the cooking and not watching the Queen's speech. Now, do any of you have any particular family traditions when it comes to Christmas Day? Hannah? Um, not really. We've we sort of started a bit of a tradition um, since having the children that they either make or choose a decoration to put on the tree each each year. So I think over the next few years, the tree decorations will become a lot more eclectic, which will be interesting. Um, but no, not really, unless you count drinking a lot of mulled wine in Baileys as a tradition, because that's certainly something I like to do as much as possible every year. Um, but no, we we just like spending time together and uh, now that we've got the kids it's all all about them really and john and john how about you guys well there's a couple of traditions uh, well on, on the run-up to christmas if i put them on my instagram feed earlier so it's something i never ever did as a kid but my, my kids are big on chris dingles so we'd, we'd always sort of go to a, to a, a chris dingle church service on the run-up to christmas and i think if my kids didn't get their orange with a candle um there there, there would be issues uh, home, but the other one, if I could, be, I, I, I don't mean to sort of put a downer on things, but I, I, I always feel slightly uncomfortable at Christmas with just how uh, sort of commercial and me, me, me it is. So we have a bit of a tradition whereby um, it tends to be me, just because I'm around more with, with, with the kids, take the kids out shopping to a toy shop or something, and we buy several items that we donate to a local charity that actually issues toys to to very often refugee families or, or, or other families who just happen to be in need who maybe wouldn't get presents themselves. But I always just think it's very important that kids get the idea that Christmas isn't solely about receiving. Yeah, and I'll do something similar with our kids. We'll buy a load of food, which we'll then donate to a food bank. So again, I guess it's kind of similar, helping them understand that Christmas is just as much about giving as it is about receiving, and that there are many people in the world less fortunate than they are. Now, speaking of presents, uh, how many presents will there be underneath the tree on Christmas morning? Is it relatively restrained, or is it more of an orgy of flying wrapping paper? John? Uh, For me, it's it's quite restrained in that we usually, we watch the kids open a few of their presents first, and and then we we take it in turns, really, uh, open a present each. So it's quite a, a relaxed affair. And Hannah, how about you? Yeah, we don't go mad. Um, the kids will have sort of one main present each. Toby this year is getting an Amazon Kindle Fire because with him um, starting school in September, uh, just to, to help with his reading and his uh, spelling and writing and everything. So we've gotten that, but we don't really spend a fortune. They've got tons of toys. We've got them a um, like a tool bench toy tool bench thing and a set of tools and that's a shared present um but we we don't go mad at all really and um i don't really feel there's any need to luckily neither of them are at the age where they they watch youtube or anything and we don't really watch much commercial telly so we we've so far avoided the please for every single giant and overpriced toy that's available um which makes life a lot easier but no we, we don't really go mad at all and um, what would things be like for you john oh i'm listening to what hannah's saying and i'm just wishing i could say the same price <laughs> uh, the, the restraint and discipline you have clearly um Right, I'll, I'll, I'll whisper this. I'll whisper. My wife does have a little bit of working mum guilt, if I can be really honest. So she does tend to go, you know, I, 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 I would personally like to sort of say, right, we're getting the one big present for the kids, but my wife likes to kind of go and buy um, quite a few things for the kids. So um, there, there's all manner of, of things that they, they would actually receive on, on Christmas Day. So I have to say it'll be, it'll be an orgy of wrapping paper or whatever you said, Tim, but it's probably a bit closer to that than it should be. 
Actually, but, but actually, when it comes to, to, to unwrapping, when it comes to actually unwrapping the presents, the gifts are reasonably, uh, the kids are reasonably restrained, actually. They will sort of take it one at a time while I run up with a notebook and write, you know, who's given what so we can do the thank you letters afterwards. Yeah, and I have to admit that with us on Christmas Eve, it's not so much that we'll be getting a delivery from Santa's sleigh, more that he'll be arriving in a specially chartered cargo plane. <laughs> I don't know how you manage it. It's, it's, it can be expensive enough to two children, but once you've got more than two, I, I really feel for the parents. Yeah, as I mentioned in one of the earlier segments, it becomes an interesting exercise in sibling dynamics because you can't be seen to be favouring one child over the other in terms of the number or value of presents. You know, I remember my brother-in-law was watching in horror because his kids, well, they're now knocking on to 20 but when they were sort of late teens and he was going through what he was buying for them. And, you know, when your kids are that age and you see sort of MacBooks and MacBook Airs, and, I, you know, I was thinking, this is costing an absolute fortune for this guy. And, and you sort of think, well, the thing is, they're students and they sort of actually, although it seems lavish, it's sort of hardware they kind of need and they can't afford. And so... Mm-hmm. Mum and Dad have got to step in. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not looking forward to those teenage days when it comes to Yeah, it's certainly becoming like that with Isaac, who turned 10 recently. And when he gave us his combined birthday and Christmas list, it also came with a loan application form. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, I know uh, Ashley, our eldest, she asked for a Michael Kors handbag. And <laughs> to, to say my eyes um, started to water a little bit when I saw the price of them would be an understatement. I, I quickly went back to her and said, you can forget that straight away because it was actually it wasn't just a handbag it's a handbag and purse (laughs) oh you've got to have a matching set haven't you i i I totally agree with that but you can have them from primark or (laughs) if you know what john there are year four kids at my daughter's school who have michael calls handbags as school bags i I see it my daughter my my youngest daughter's school gone are the days of when you used to have a, a, a rucksack now it's a handbag I don't know. I'm just confused by the whole world. I'm not at school anymore. Yeah, well, th- thankfully my daughters are happy with rucksacks, but I, I, yeah, I've seen it a few times now, and you know, it's, it's, it's my, sure. Yeah, mine yo-yo. She has to have a selection of bags. It's the right accessory for the right day, and I'm just like, okay. Oh, handbags are so last year. You need to have a personal butler now. <laughs> um, yeah, I've already applied and been accepted for that job. And have been doing it for about 21 years. <laughs> so. well, I suppose it's better at least than intensive potty training as a, a recent advert was recruiting for. As much as I moan about the handbag, I wouldn't want to ever go back to potty training ever again. <laughs> I've done my nappy time, thanks. The next time I'm changing the nappy is when it's probably the wife's and we're all old and decrepit. <laughs> <laughs> what about your grandkids, John? Come on. Oh, don't. That gives me the... <laughs> Because that is a real possibility within the next five years. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to go and book myself into counselling. I would do. We, we can't help you there, mate. So, um, so time is marching on. So let's make these last few questions quick fire ones. Uh, so John A, then Hannah, and then John R. Russell Sprouts, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, never. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> next question. If you had to listen to one and only one Christmas song for the rest of your life, what would it be? John? It's going to be Fairytale in New York. Sorry, I'm going to get in there early. Hannah? Oh, um, Little Drummer Boy. Oh, interesting. <laughs> and John? Um, just because I can't have the Pogues, uh, I'm going to go for Last Christmas by Wham. Haha, <laughs> proper 80s classic. Excellent. Uh, and then what are you hoping Santa will bring you this Christmas? Or do you already know what you're getting, John? Uh, uh, a whole selection of exceedingly expensive, good quality camera lenses. Very nice. And Hannah? Um, mine would be if you swapped camera lenses for coffee. I just want all the coffee. Excellent. We've just bought ourselves a new Nespresso machine for Christmas. So we're all loaded up coffee-wise. Uh, and finally, John? Yeah, without mentioning brands, I, I only put one thing on my Christmas list this year, and it's John Lewis vouchers. Because there's some headphones that I want that are ridiculously expensive that I 
have parent guilt of buying for myself. <laughs> so I'm trying to save up through presents, if that makes sense. So let's finish off by taking a quick look both backwards and forwards. So we'll look backwards first. So what are the big things that have happened in our lives since we started the podcast back in February 2016? Uh, let's start with Hannah. You've probably experienced as much change as the rest of the team put together. Oh, oh I don't know what you mean. I mean, I had a second baby um, with the first one not quite being two. And then I started a business and then I carried on freelancing and blogging then I got a full-time job I moved house somewhere in between there as well so a couple of minor things yeah that was just last Thursday (laughs) (laughs) Mr Adams what about yourself well I got out of prison I'm no longer on probation (laughs) Uh, well, um, well, uh, well, since February 2016, uh, well, the, the one thing really springs to mind, that, that's Izzy starting school. She started in September, and that's, but that's been a huge change for me because, well, obviously I have to get her settled in. Thankfully, she's settled in really well. There's a little bit of jealousy with her older sister that comes out from time to time because obviously older sister has been the one who's been at school until, till, until this point in time. It's allowed me to, you know, I've always wanted to run my own business and with Izzy at school, I've now got a, a free arrange to actually concentrate on blogging and freelance work, uh, which I'm now doing. So that's actually been a huge shift for the whole family. I could casually mention my, my Vueo Blog Award win last year, but of course that's old news now because of course Harriet Shearsmith got the Parent Blogging Award just the other week. <laughs> and finally, John, how about you? I'm trying to think. We've moved house and I've started a new job. So they're going to be the two biggest things. Yeah, n- no major milestones in the blogging world, though. So, and I don't think that's going to change, if I'm honest. It's amazing when we all look back. Um, each of us has had a number of major things happen, whether it's babies, job moves, house moves, kids' milestones, and so on over the last two years. And I think it just goes to show how quickly life does change. Last question of all any big plans for 2018? Hannah? I'm really hoping to get apples and pips off the ground a bit more. Um, so currently crowdfunding for my Random Acts of Kindness scheme. And I really just want to make it a bit more of, of a sort of community, um, a, a sort of goodwill. Not quite a social enterprise, but certainly a lot more about giving and, and helping people as well as offering nice products and hampers and things. So, yeah, I really want to focus on apples and pips a lot and, and move that forward. Uh, Mr. Roberts, what about your plans? <laughs> the one thing I want to do is something I've been trying to do for years, and that's actually get organised. So that's not just work, but actually really get organised, start using the lists that I write and actually tick some of those things off. So, um, And potentially with a gap in the podcast market coming so- shortly, I might resurrect behind the blog podcast. But me and, you know I've been talking about that for years now, and it's still not done. So... I look forward to seeing it launched. Finally, what about you, John? Well, it's the thing I've already started, uh, and again, it comes back to Willie starting school, actually, is, is paying a bit more attention to my health and doing more aerobic exercise. You'll see me doing more of that um, during 2018. Um, sort of on the domestic front at home, um, Jill and I have had a long-term plan to actually set up uh, and, and move house. Whether that actually materialises in 2018 or not, I, th- I think probably not, but we'll actually, we've got some work we've got to do to this house where we can sell, so I, I'd like to think we'll actually get some of that done, so we'll actually sort of, you know, we'll get that sort of started, uh, that process started off at least. Blog-wise, I'm getting a lot more active on sort of Instagram now, so you'll see more of that. Yeah, I've got a few other bits and pieces that I, I, I won't talk about right now because because sort of plans in the early stages, but um, yeah, things going on. As for me, I spoke a bit earlier about our travel plans for 2018, but beyond that, I'm intending to enjoy the downtime of not having to produce the podcast every week, and I'll be spending Christmas and January mapping out a couple of new projects that I've got in mind for next year. So, watch this space. <laughs> And that's it. So before we go, let me just say how much I've enjoyed catching up with each of you regularly over the past year or two. And I know we'll continue to keep in touch and see each other in the future. So 
I guess this is more au revoir than adieu. Uh, and it's it's been a blast and a genuine pleasure. So thank you. I think I've got to say, Tim, thanks for asking me along for the ride. I know I've not been the most regular person on the podcast, but um, no, it's, it, 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 like Christ it's like Christmas, but it's been, it's been great fun. Yeah, it has. I've been really, really pleased to be a part of it. So, yeah, thanks for having me on the team, and it's been great getting to know everybody. And, yeah, I echo all of that. It's, it's been great speaking to some like-minded people and hearing more from all of you. It's been brilliant. So before we go, just remind us where we can find you all online. So, Hannah? So my blog is buddingsmiles.co.uk and I'm on all social media platforms at Budding Smiles. And John? Uh, right, you will find me at... Uh, the, the, the blog is at dadblogukuk.com uh, uh, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook, um, dadblogukuk and you will find me on YouTube john adams d b u k and finally i am dadugeek.co.uk and dadugeek on all good social media and that is it for our final ever episode of the meet the parents podcast you can find all 76 episodes on itunes and on our website at meettheparentspodcast.com and you can keep up with all the team across their blogs and social media So whether you've been a regular or an occasional listener, we really appreciate everyone who has taken the time to listen to us chatting about all things parenting over the past two years. We've had loads of fun doing the podcast and hopefully you've enjoyed listening to us too. So all that remains is for us all to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So... Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. (laughs)